It's Hearthstone Grand Masters. We're in day number three of week one here. I'm Matt Admirable, and I'm joined by Darok Brown. And we just saw Orange put his first win on the board and Hunter's first win on the board with a two to one victory over Hunter Ace in this one. We got Pavel versus Casey. That's coming up here in Grand Masters. Derek, how have you been enjoying the day? I have been having a great time so far. I'm very glad that Hunter Ace, oh, sorry, that Orange got the win there. While I obviously like Hunter Ace a lot as a player, I think that Orange and Ball Control with their Hunter were getting a little bit too unlucky. They needed that win to bolster how the deck should have been doing. Yeah, you take a look at the matches that have happened uh, so far. Pretty stark contrast from our first two days with a lot of two to zero victories that were <laughs> happening in Europe. And I think that might be players. It's, it's a mix. It's partly players hitting the matchups that they want to for their uh, secondary and tertiary decks. And also, I think players getting a little bit more used to specialists. As we settle in, I think it'll be less and less polarized, especially as the weeks develop and people improve their their the cards they substitute in, in their secondary and tertiary decks. Because from a lot of the players, one of the big self-criticisms we've been hearing uh, is that they think their tech cards are not the optimal strategies. Their, their primary deck, which is usually what they're playing on ladder, is obviously pretty perfect at this point. These guys play an awful lot of Hearthstone, but we've been hearing players say like, Hexlord Malakras in Mage isn't very good against Warrior, where it's meant to be. Uh, Viper saying that in his Rogue deck, his anti-Mage cards maybe aren't quite up to scratch with what they should be, uh, instead substituting in some other anti-Mage cards. So as we develop, I think we will see even more two ones rather than two zeros. Another part of that story too for me is just players hitting their curve, drawing the key cards point. that they failed to draw in their first couple of matches. Very much like Viper in Orange in their yes. first two. So we got this match, it's coming up, Pavel versus Casey. Let's take a look at the deck and see what they're in store for. Uh, Pavel ended up taking a big risk this week by bringing the Chef Priest to this one, and it is not meant to face off against Bomb Warrior. It's meant to take advantage of Rogues, of which he has faced zero this week. It is absolutely not meant to face Bomb Warrior. This deck revolves entirely around drawing every single card in your deck and then going for Chef Nomi, seancing a copy of it back to your hand so you can play it up to three times, at least against Warrior. That's what you really need. That's the amount of value that you generally need generally need to be beating that matchup. The problem then obviously comes in the fact that if your opponent shuffles five, six, seven bombs into your deck at the start of the game, you die. Wait a minute, Just Derek. Die. You mean if I'm drawing my entire deck and my opponent's shuffling bombs that I'm going to draw the bombs too? That's exactly what I'm saying. Incredibly perceptible. Okay, well, let's take a look at Casey's deck and see what he's bringing to the table. Oh, it's Bomb Warrior. <laughs> what a disastrous scenario for Pavel to have run into. <laughs> That's quite a pickle. And honestly, I really like Casey's uh, variant of Bomb Warrior here. Mm. One of the big things I didn't notice until the match had started, he was not running Omega Assembly uh, in, in his initial deck. And I think that is quite clever because the more I've played Bomb Warrior, the more I realize it's like a mid-range aggro deck. Yeah, I'm, I'm somewhat on the fence about Casey's build here. I think the meta that it actually ended up hitting didn't work out or should not usually have worked out perfectly for him because there's a lot of bomb warriors. And like you said, no Omega assembly, which you want to have the value in the mirror. Uh, and obviously uh, a lot more of the value cards cut for cards like Augmented Elec. However, with him running into Pavel here, not playing bomb warrior, uh, and I believe his first uh, series was up against, uh, oh, we're probably in a spectator game there. I'm going to hope that's a spectator game. Even right. though that he was up against uh, a hunter, I believe in his first series of the day. Either way, he, he curved out very well. It was Orange, wasn't it, that he was up Yeah, it was against Orange. Orange. That's right. He curved out very beautifully against Orange and really just didn't give him much of a chance. Orange also had, I think, pretty subpar hands. In he did. Game. He, he actually did. tweeted out yesterday, Orange did, that he did, didn't get to play Hearthstone he, yesterday. He really did not. That's going to happen sometimes. That's any card game you play. Sometimes you're just not going to get cards and your opponent's going to get the perfect cards and you're going to lose. That's part of the game. But that's also part of bringing Bomb Warrior is that I think Bomb Warriors has a much higher potential to draw the right cards than uh, Hunter does to draw the right cards and have very decisive victories. And I think also that's one of the benefits of uh, Grandmasters is that we are playing a long style of game where it's double round robin. Players have to play against each other twice just in the first season. Uh, so that kind of variance will level out, especially if you are bringing the correct techs and decks every single week. Casey's got double Elec and Clockwork Goblin in hand, and that's a fantastic <laughs> start. Pavel's opening hand cost zero mana, and he couldn't use the guards. Casey hits the bombs into Blastmaster Boom. He's three for three now. I'm curious. I was about to say, I'm curious if he levels out with a second Elec here and goes, you know what? You better have it. I was honestly considering that. It walks into... Um, big Wild Pyro. Forbidden turn. Words, or yeah, a big... 
wild pirate turn as one of the bombs comes right off the top there. Pretty fortunate for Pavel again because Blastmaster Boom summons more Boom Bots the more bombs are in your opponent's deck. This is going to get ugly quick. Especially as Pavel's hand, we haven't even mentioned, sucks. <laughs> To put it mildly, it's terrible. He hasn't found Wild Pyro, uh, Acolyte of Pain, or most importantly of all, Gadget San Auctioneer. And not really any way to defend himself. He could play like his entire hand. Look, it looks silly. It looks very silly, but the whole purpose of the deck is to slam Gadget San Auctioneer and draw your deck. If he gets Auctioneer, this is insane. He plays his entire hand pretty much and cycles through most of his deck. The turn of truth. That ain't it. That's something. That's not a bad card to have found, but he has no way to damage it himself. <laughs> Do you seance it? <laughs> you also have 10 cards in hand. All right. Officially the first Ooh. turn of the game for Pavel <laughs> is taking place. <laughs> Look, he took a risk coming in to this week. He right. Well, knew he was going to have his back up against the wall if he played Warrior. If he played Rogue, that was the bread and butter. He just didn't hit it. It's a risk versus reward scenario. And I've often I've often heard Pavel, when I've uh, had the chance to sit with him and discuss Hearthstone strategy, gotten a lot of insight into into how he's built his tournament lineups in the past. He's, he's told me that a lot of times in tournaments, his major goal is to take advantage of players making a mistake in, in what decks they bring. Not necessarily trying to take advantage of the best things that are out there or be balanced. He's trying to hope someone made an error and does and he gets a big payoff. Speaking of a big payoff, this is where his deck finally starts to come together. We could see Wild Pyro, Northshire Cleric, Spell, anyone, then Circle of Healing. That will draw him four cards, hopefully finding him the Gadget San. He's got to get moving right now. So he's taking into account hand size yes, with that's the big Northshire concern. Cleric. So spell first, then Northshire Cleric, then Circle Healing. Okay, I like it. Obviously, at this point, overdrawing either Chef Nomi or Seance would be pretty bad. Or obviously, Gadget's and Auctioneer would be one of the worst overdraws as well. That puts him to nine cards in hand. So he could have gone for it first, but I mean, I guess he didn't want to expend anything else. I don't know, Turbo drawing through his deck as quick as possible Divine, sounds yeah. pretty good. Nice interaction with uh, Topsy Turbo here, restore yep. extra health. Absolutely the way to go for it here. Divine him, two more cards. Perfect. He can go for Regenerate for just one more card, just to find that gadget San auction. And he needs you. it. He's clearing out board position uh, in the meantime as well. He's not using Regenerates on his face though, which is a little scary. He's playing the double uh, Divine him version of the deck, which makes it less important. There's the Nomi. 11 cards to go to get there. Still two Auctioneers in the deck. Still an Acolyte in the deck. And a Wild Pyromancer loaded in hand with plenty of zero-cost spells. Also still in the deck. Two Grave Harbors that are sitting there. So Casey has yet to draw one of the Brawls. And if he cannot start filling Pavel's deck with bombs, he is not going to be in good shape. I mean, it's a tough matchup, but one single situation like this one can turn everything around. It can indeed. However, while things are starting to swing back in Pavel's favor, they could start to go wrong yet again once the Nomi turns roll around. Because when you're playing specifically Bomb Warrior and your opponent has no cards in their deck, each of your bomb cards is just deal five damage to your opponent tacked on. Battle Cry deal five. I'd play that card. Battle Cry Mind Blast. <laughs> I'd play that card. KC going for just the laser here and pass. This is a heed directly to Pavel having uh, his deck full of things like um, Lazul's Scheme, yeah, Forbidden okay. Words. It's harder to use those cards. And this is a pretty big divergence from KC's standard style of play, which is just to play very quickly, throw your things out on the board, kill your opponent as fast as you can, even when playing this Bomb Warrior. But I think it's a a good time to slow down for him here, realizing he doesn't, he just doesn't have to play that quickly anymore. Whoa. Silence the Wild Pyro to restore it to a 3-2. Power Word Shield to draw a card. 
Those are world champ plays right there. It, it's a, it's strange looking, but he's also, you know, Casey being at 60 health right now with seven more to come. The chef Nomi does not load up 60 damage at once. Like fatigue starts that's to true. set in. That's, that's something true. you have to consider. Yeah, and being able to, say your opponent chef Nomi's, being able to just play Blastmaster Boom and not die, those are the kind of situations where you can win even in that late stage of the game. The other thing too is being able to set up for a uh, five more pass on the following turn. There's a lot that, that goes into it Good where point. Casey, uh, if Pavel has to rely on Auctioneer, yep. can attempt to leave Auctioneer alive to limit Pavel's plays, uh, lest he take more fatigue damage. There's some strange types of counterplay that require a great deal of experience, specifically in this matchup, yeah. or a very keen understanding of how to visualize and then solve those problems. And so now for Casey, even having not found any more of his bomb cards, he's saying, you know what? A classic Dr. Boom will do just fine for me. Oh, and oh. the Boombots have a rush oh, as well. Oh, will, will it do? <laughs> it shall. Just a Dr. Boom, I guess. And Pavel now has been stripped of ways to draw cards. And that could be troublesome. It's got to be said as well, considering how bad most games go when both of your auctioneers are in the bottom seven cards at least of your deck, they usually look a lot worse than this. Oh yeah. He's done a very good job of making this game even somewhat palatable with his Chef Priest. Or to face, I think you're pretty happy to see right now. Uh, you have time to heal it up. Yep. You know you're going to be on a Forbidden Words this turn anyway. It's a seven mana Shadow Word there. And he's happy about it. What else are you going to do with that mana? Yep. You're going to play all your zero cost cards? <laughs> Wise choice here from Casey. Now the Dynamite is coming down. Oh, or, or goes the Hero Power for development and a clean, a clean clear here. I think it's wise. So Pavel now with Northshire Cleric, one circle of healing left. I think the time is nigh. You really need to, be, to get right? this active. It just has to be. So again, have to account for hand size and what that actually looks like. Do you like to play with fire? Is someone injured? Risks the boom bot. No other option. Wild Pyro oh, gone, but fine. three cards coming. That's perfectly fine. So I'm thinking Grave Harbor Auctioneer might be pretty close to ideal in these draws. There's the Grave Harbor. Like, There's an Auctioneer. He gets nigh on every card. There's still a bomb in his deck as well, I believe. Casey just has a lot of life to work with. I'm curious if Pavel actually... Does he have a chance where maybe he can seance up the Grave Harbors to try and pressure? Or is he risking it's to very much that worth way? considering. Casey is running one copy of Brawl, which very much more allows you, uh, gives you much more allowance to go for Grave Horror into Seance. Topsy Turvy with. Uh, about just dying though. Topsy Turvy with Lazul's scheme offers up a yeah. very nice okay. uh, one two punch with this guy who's an auctioneer. The, the deck is now empty for Pavel, which opens him to Chef cards. Nomi. But he has an Auctioneer in play. Right. And this is where Casey can quite happily just leave the Auctioneer up. Three and cards coming for Casey on the Weapons Project top deck. And finds the brawl. brawl. Still no bomb cards, however. These cards are pretty weak at he's just of, killing your opponent. But he's got 69 health. That's a pretty nice <laughs> life total to be at when you're talking about playing against a Nomi Priest. I agree. As here we go. The Nomi Seance comes down. This is what the deck is all about. Pavel cannot afford to clear off the 4-4, which leaves Casey opportunities to land Brawl. Here we go. If he lands this Brawl successfully, that's how Pavel is in most trouble. He never wins this. You never win this. You never what? lose here. <laughs> Casey wins the one and eight brawl. <laughs> and now the counter pressure on Pavel is of major significance. I'm done. Who is Red's this man? caliber found with Elec in hand. Pavel down to 19. He's going to go down to 17. He's going to play Chef Nomi. And that's a lot of Demahe, as Derek put it earlier, that's coming He's in. He's just dead. He's just dead. The swing from the wrench caliber, the two bombs that comes when you play it with augmented Elec, and the fatigue. That's game. 
Pavel was so <laughs> close. And that successful brawl completely changed the landscape. Yes. That being said, I think Casey still gets there with the sequence of draws. I agree. Had. I agree. But it was so easy for him when he won that one and eight brawl. I think he just has the life total to get there. Seven six sixes only deal 42 damage. And when you have more than 42 life and you really only need one extra turn to get it done, What, what are you going to do? These are the decks that we're dealing with. It's like, oh, I only get to play Dr. Boom on curve. Oh, I only get to deal 42 damage to my opponent. And it wasn't good enough. He didn't even get to deal 42 damage. He lost the brawl. <laughs> Casey has it all going for him right now. And that's why he is smooth sailing through this, getting good matchups, getting good draws, getting good pan outs. Casey's looking unstoppable right now. And Pavel's the only one in this series who can stop him. Quick break, and then game two is coming up. You didn't tell us to play it. I didn't think I had to. It's perfectly obvious. Mike, I am to be robbing the bank. I take henchmen for vault smashing and shiny stealing. <laughs> Plan is obvious. It's a start, yes, but... You won't get a single coin unless you take care of the city's guards. Let's rip open Violet Hole and unleash the prisoners of the city. That'll keep the guards busy. Certainly, but that's not... No. We must sow chaos in the streets. I got rockets. Anyone need rockets? Try to see the big picture. Shiny, shiny, shiny. We have to break their will before we can loot, you fool. Please, everyone, please. Ah! Let's drop some rockets to the city. Uh -huh. Ooh, big candle. And then? And then we just take the whole ship in wherever we want. Yes! Finally, you're exactly right. Seriously? That's dumb. Ah, we standard. Just wait till second gear kicks in. Uh... <laughs> it's just like I said. We're going to take Dalarat for all that it's got. It's a genius plan. It's simple. It should have been obvious. And absolutely nothing will go wrong. So, genius, how do we land? I'm Facundo Prusso, more known as Nargivan. My username is an Illivan reference. I used to play Warcraft 3 a lot. Illivan is my favorite character. Back in the days, I really liked uh, watching RDU stream as well, after I saw him for the first time on some Green Hawk tournament. And then I got to beat him on some online tournament finals. That was what, my first tournament win, my first prize win. That was a very key moment for me in Hearthstone. I think I'm pretty good at recognizing what decks are good and how to improve them. I like the Su play style. Some people think it's like broke back deck, but then you have a lot of things to master, and there is a lot of little things in that deck that, of course, you can draw one, two, three, four, and kill an opponent, but that's not gonna happen every game, and you know, you need to know how to improve your odds. I don't know if other players already respect me or not. In my region, I think they do. I'm not sure about the other grandmasters. This year, I, I really want to qualify for global finals. I why I didn't make it last year, so that's the main goal. I hear a lot of players say first season didn't, wasn't that important, but I think it really is. If you win the first season, you made it to Global Finals. Nagadon fell to his teammate Rays in his first match in the Americas Grand Masters. He'll be playing later on today where he's taking on Dog to hunt down that 1-1 one -one score. But we are amidst a series right now, Casey versus Pavel. Uh, and it's 1-0 for Casey right now, which is not unexpected. Um, but we have a pretty cool move here from Casey uh, going into game number two, where he's able to swap over to his tertiary deck uh, and get some extra extra padding even against the Chef Nomi Priest. Right. It's already pretty favored against Pavel's Chef Priest. Uh, but I think primarily the reason for why he's switching over to his uh, tertiary deck is the second copy of Brawl that it takes in. That secondary Brawl is very important. But tertiarily, the reason why he's switching over to his deck is because he knows that Pavel 
will switch to his deck with two Mountain Giants in there. And therefore, his Casey's Tertiary deck has two Big Game Hunters and two Super Colliders in there, which will help deal with those. Tertiarily, I kind of understood what you said, but there was a lot of airily words in there. And I'm left with a very airily sort of thoughts in my head. Uh, I think they're not really collected right now. Airily is the word. <laughs> we're just full of errors. <laughs> Errorly. Errorly. <laughs> Much like how I say horror. Horror. Error. Let's get into game number two, Casey versus Pavel. And again, Pavel, not in good shape uh, in this one as uh, we're having a little bit of player issue. So we'll get in the game as quickly as we can. Apologies for that. Uh, Pavel's secondary and tertiary deck is kind of interesting where he's added two copies of Mountain Giant in the secondary deck. He removes an Acolyte and a Zilliax. His tertiary deck, two Shadow War Death and a Mass Hysteria, loses a Swamp Ooze, a Divine Hymn, and a Zilliax. TJ yesterday dubbed this the Pavel strategy, where you yeah. basically just bring the same deck three times. Right. There's very little difference between these three decks. And I imagine, I feel like the point of the secondary and tertiary decks is, well, quite obviously, to make your bad matchups good. It's less so to make your good matchups better, I think, because you're already favored in those. You want to tech for the possibilities where you're behind. And therefore, his... I feel like all the matchups that suck are still going to be bad when he switches over to his secondary and tertiary deck. I feel like something more drastic had to be done. I'm talking like, for example, some of the players have teched in uh, the, what is it, test subject plus, um, I'm on, I can't remember the exact combo you go for, but basically it allows you to generate infinite seances by going with uh, the test subject uh, and then copying your uh, test subject and then playing yeah. seances and, and all that nonsense. I, I know what you're referring to, but it's just those decks always elude me in terms of understanding them quickly. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of matchups I need to practice to be able to understand. And that's a deck that requires an exceptional amount of time to, to really dig deep and understand and master from, uh, you know, a true in-depth perspective. For the most part, I tend to get the grasp of those decks and move on. But Fair I know enough. what you're talking about. It's yep. test subject, and you get a lot of extra gas, so at the end of the game, you can still do some nonsense. I guess it's just test subject seance, right? Because you get another test subject back, and then when the one on board dies, it gives you another, another seance. Yeah. It's some sort of copying it mechanism, or like... Oh, no, that just gives you the same amount of stuff back. I, I've Whatever. Seen, I've seen like, something. I've seen, like, Divine Spirits and Inner <laughs> Fires included. Yeah. Um... Just wait. Just ways to steal a game. I mean, that's the nature of a combo deck. Is it, it kind of flounders around until it has its ideal turn, and it goes, "Oops, I won." Oops, all victories. That's that to me is really like the standout marquee of this Chef Priest deck. Is it doesn't really do anything until the end of the game when it does everything. Yeah. Yeah. And for Pavel, thankfully, this hand is much more like what you're looking for. Just having. Gadgetan Auctioneer in your starting hand will make this so much easier for him. Still very difficult. I'll amend my statement. The deck does nothing. <laughs> it's it's doing nothing right now. All right, not it will do or has done nothing. Currently, nothing is being done. But that's what it's doing. Yes. Nothing. Absolutamente nada. I wonder. He's got to do something here, though, or else he's going to burn a card. Nothing generally doesn't work in Hearthstone. As a rough rule of thumb, if you do nothing, you'll lose. Yeah, it's it's a pretty strange situation to be in. Like, th there have been combo decks over time that, you know, kind of effectively do nothing. Like, Freeze Mage, for instance. That deck really did a lot of nothing for the first mm. seven or eight turns of the game. Fair enough. I mean, that was the power of Ice Block, right? Yeah. <laughs> But here we see Pavel, obviously his hand size rapidly filling up, feeling like he needs to do something for next turns, uh, the Uber turn next turn with Gadgetan Auctioneer coin and all them cheap spells as well. I will be curious. getting something on the board here. I will be curious to see if he uses coin or saves it. Um, you know, he has an ooze that can just it hits a super collider, which isn't ideal, um, but it's just something. You get a card out of your hand, you get to draw an extra card from the coin. I mean, it, it depends on what he draws off the auctioneer, right? If he finds a second auctioneer yeah. in those other cards, he might save it. I'm a bit worried about. Otherwise, the, he'll play it. I'm a bit worried about the use of Wild Power Mansion in that situation because where is he going to get a board clear now? Okay, fair enough. He, wait, so he's switched over to his secondary deck, which does not have Mass Hysteria in there, which, okay, I can see where you're coming from. Maybe he should have just part, just thrown away one of his uh, less powerful spells. Just think of the ooze. You know, obviously he wants to hit Wrench Caliber with that card, but. Okay. Your opponent has not played Wrench Caliber yet, yep. so they have to draw it. And I think when you're playing these kinds of combo decks, you do have to understand where you're at and decide to take those kinds of risks. At some point, you have to go, you know what? It's not going to work. It's a good point. 
He does find the second one, however, to uh, help him deal with that situation. But I, I fully understand your point that the uh, wild pyromancer is how you clear the board. I mean, yeah. I, I guess he's thinking, I'm just not going to clear the board for the whole game. I'm just going to try and draw so quickly that I can get these grave horrors down before I need to clear. I, th I think part of it, too, is he's going to draw a lot of cards. So he anticipates finding hmm. um, another copy of... Uh, of Wild Power Man's at some point. Yep. There is only a low news in the deck, so I understand the thought. And unwilling to expend the uh, Lazul scheme in regards to uh, the Wild Power Man's return that's upcoming. Yeah, makes sense. Obviously, the uh, the circle of healing as well can be used to not to draw not just one card, but uh, more than one card. Dare I say, with the North Shy Cleric and Wild Pyro. Seven, seven. Yeah, Casey here Go. showing his willingness to just throw down his minions on curve, no matter whether they're getting the optimal effect or not. He just needs to keep the pressure up while he can. Here we go. Denying the armor as well. Pretty nice. We saw Casey getting up to absurd amounts of health last game, so Pavel making any maneuvers he can to stop that is very nice. Ooh. Divine yeah. Him draws two cards. Arguably want to save that for when you're going for heal, to actually get the healing on your hero uh, to counteract the bomb damage that you will yeah. inevitably be getting later uh, in the he game. He really has to think about hero power uh, first here, because he wants to clear off the rest of these minions, but he really needed to utilize this second Wild Power Mancer super effectively, and mm -hmm. right now that's not the case. He's just letting it die. And it's because of hand size. He's going to draw up to 10 cards with this Circle of Healing because... I'm sorry, up to 9 cards with the Circle of Healing, excuse me. And that strands the Acolytes uh, as being just natural draws that after they get damaged. And this really does, yet again, demonstrate Pavel's priorities with this deck, which is draw over removal pretty much every time. By throwing down the Pyro early on and double powered shielding, he wanted to get more zero mana spells for his Gadgetan option here. Here, he didn't want to clear with the Wild Pyro. He wanted to draw with it to go up to the maximum amount of cards possible in his hand. And look at that play. Oh, one ya. <laughs> Spent five mana on that first damage. That is just the ultimate display of dominance. Super Collider to the face. I still remember in one of the Hearthstone Global games last year where Hunter Race for Team Norway could have set up two-turn lethal with a Super Collider swing to the face, but did not opt to take it, and it was one of the saddest moments of my casting. <laughs> but here we go, Pavel launching off with the Gadgetan Auctioneer, trying to get down to that Chef Nomi by the next turn if he can, and it's looking like he will. Double Mountain Giant found as well, so... Yeah, actually that would be good. Well, yeah. this prompts some action. So Casey has, you know, the goods here, I'd say. It's Doctor, it's Big Game Hunter, it's a shield slam. I've got the beast in my I mean, even just a hit with the, uh, the weapon would have been cool. Yeah. I guess he doesn't want to take the damage. Save that for he later could, on. Yeah, right, he could have shield slammed the auctioneer and used the super glider. Yes. I think this is much more efficient. I'm wondering whether he wants to kill the auctioneer at all, which is a very valid consideration. Obviously, interesting. because Pavel still has three cards left in deck after he draws, of course, um, I think that's that's enough time that it buys you to kill off the Auctioneer there. Because with only one Acolyte in the deck, there's not even that much draw. Oh! I've got the beast in my soul. Oh! <laughs> I didn't know you could do that! I didn't even consider that. Seance can hit opposing minions? I didn't know that! You didn't know that? Oh, no! Well, I knew it could do that. I didn't even think that you'd hit a blowing big game hunter with it. Hoisted by his own petard! <laughs> Why would the big game hunter do that to its own to its own Blastmaster? It's a seance. It's like uh, it's a spirit big game hunter. So it's a ghost now. This is a trip down memory lane for me. Ah, uh, Pavel doing a fantastic job of clearing off the board there. Obviously we can see Casey still very much in the driving seat in this game, to be perfectly honest. Clears off the board here as Pavel draws through to the end of his deck. 
Double Clock Clock Goblin's probably just gonna kill him. Yep. But, uh, you know, it's not over. Good old big game hunter. Here's another one. It's almost taking me back to the good old days. Still five mana, it doesn't have quite the same feel to it. And an Alec. To add insult to injury, Pavel. It, he's put up a good fight here, but gosh darn it, it's just not enough. It really just is not. No more board clears left. Chef Nomi, he is just going to die should he play that. That's it. Is technically alive through bombs. I'm sorry, through the board. Which is why he has to go for this play and pray that the brawl isn't there. But clearly we can see KC, whatever, taking it the slow way, just showing Pavel that he had all the cards he needed. Going with a double brawl victory. Whatever. The double brawl victory and immediately stuffed as the first three minutes out of the pool. <laughs> all belong to KC here, but it matters not. Pavel cannot win the game. Concedes and KC. <laughs> Smooth 2-0 victories, back-to-back -back matches for him. Almost no chance of being in trouble in these games. He did technically just miss Lethal there at the end by passing over to Pavel's turn. Obviously, he never, ever, ever loses. He can't. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's as he good He mathematically as well, yeah. couldn't. He knows the cards left yeah, in Pavel's Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. But either way, uh, as expected there for Pavel, bringing that Nomi Chef Priest if you want to call it that, just really has not panned out for him. As predicted, as soon as we saw his matchups up against two Bomb Warriors, Seiko and then I believe Casey, as we see here, just going absolutely to town. Yep. I just want to commend Casey for his uh, pure raw efficiency in that last game where more actions just mean you have to take more time. It's right in line with the personality of playing as quickly as possible. That was the easiest way to win. Click and turn. That is game theory optimal <laughs> in terms of laziness. <laughs> we got Casey for an interview. Casey, can you hear us? Yes, hello. Hey, guys. Congratulations. Hey, how are you? I'm very good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted to show, to, to show Paul he should never bring this thing again. Oh, <laughs> already going to fire shots. All right, well, Crush keep, keep him coming. I don't really have any questions for you this one because, uh, you, I mean, this is an expected outcome and kind of a stomp. So, you know, talk to me about Grandmasters overall. Fire some more shots if you want. Keep them coming. I love it. I don't like firing shots, but, like, I try to fire shot at Pavel because I think he's a really good player, but he just doesn't do enough right now. And I think the group that we are that we have right now is really powerful if everyone just keeps comp like preparing a lot more. Like, yeah. So I just wanna have competition. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to ask about that too. I mean, it seems like you're alluding to uh, the competitive integrity of this. It seems like that you want stiffer competition at the very least. Yes, I want that. Definitely. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't I, want know me priests. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun, at least. It's a, a nice break from the Bomb Warrior Mirrors, I suppose, at least. Uh, but I remember you saying in your interview yesterday that you were very, very close to bringing Rogue. Uh, obviously, now that you're 2-0 with Bomb Warrior, you must be feeling pretty happy about that. Uh, but going forward into the next few weeks, are you thinking that Bomb Warrior is going to be the absolute go-to deck still? Or uh, are there going to be counters evolving to that in the specialist format? I think the go-to deck is Mage, and the deck to beat is Mage, and also the deck to try to build better than pe what people have brought this week is Mage. Like, try to optimize Mage and try to play it better and try to beat it. And so I've been catching a lot of your stream lately. I know you, you like to uh, to get on there and, and play some pretty competitive games. Uh, you know, you, you're really focused, but you're also pretty fun-loving. Talk to me about your stream and how that's going for you and uh, some plans that you have coming up. So my... My stream has is, has been educational, to say the least, but I took a break for like three to four weeks because I have been traveling and then the GM summit and now I was like, I didn't feel good at all about this meta game. I felt like I needed time to prepare and now since I went 2-0, I feel pretty good, so I'm going to go back and play some Bomb Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> where, where can everyone find your stream at? Uh, Twitch TV, Casey Vaughn. That's my Twitch TV. All right. Well, Casey, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on your uh, on your two zero here to start Grandmasters, and look forward to seeing you play next week. Thanks. Have a nice day. I know as well that his stream is Casey One, but I do love that his accent kind of makes it sound like he's saying Casey One. <laughs> like I won. He won. He won. He did win. Uh, Casey won the number one.
uh, is what that stream's going to be. I, I love watching his stream. It's just very relaxed and talks through his plays, uh, you know, very clearly and concisely. And just that's what Casey's all about. He's a fun, fun loving guy and just loves the game. Yeah, he is one of the most intelligent, most naturally gifted Hearthstone players. And when you pair it with the fact that he plays an unbelievable amount of Hearthstone, he is on that client all day, every day, grinding out and finding the absolute best strategies. It is no surprise that he is undefeated here in the Grandmasters. Pleasure to watch. That's our fourth match that's in the books, which means we have two more here on our third day of the Hearthstone Grandmasters for European region. RDU versus Seiko is coming up. Both these players looking to secure their 2-0 start here at the European Grandmasters.